Professor Francesca Stavrakopoulou joins again. Those who want to meet God face to face. Why is that? Is there a natural evolutionary reason for why humans want to look at and find faces in many things, whether it's your cup of tea and the foam at the top looks like a face, or you cut a tree stump and in the rings it looks like Jesus' face, or Jesus' face appears on toast, right? Or in the clouds. There seems to be a natural reason faces are so important, and I think there is, and science backs that up. However, people want to meet God face to face. Does this have anything to do with the idea of the Jericho skull? This is her week. So I hope that everybody will go get her book, show her appreciation for her brilliance and for the wonderful scholarship that she has done. Okay, so there's this really old face. Uh, nine and a half thousand years ago, worshipers most of us desire to be face to face with God, right? In the Bible, we talk about it. Moses just wants to be face to face, and he actually is face to face with God mm -hmm. in one account. Um, and then, you know, there's even this hint, weird hint in the New Testament. Marcion seemed to reflect when he says, like, like, Jesus said that no one has seen God except him. So how is Moses seeing God if he's saying that no one has? So you kind of wonder if Marcionism has some leg up in the New Testament. I don't know. I'll leave that up for you guys to debate. Point is, everyone wants to be face to face with God, but they're also terrified at what might become of this. So you mentioned this, uh, this concept of the Jericho skull that's nine and a half thousand years old, possibly mm. older. Do you think this stems from that far back i mean we're talking about glebecky tepe kind of mm, yeah way. i don't yeah when i'm talking about the jericho skull so this is like neolithic this object and you know just and i'm sure like your viewers will, will know but these are these plastered skulls that we find so um somebody underwent head modification when they were a child when they were born as they, they were selected for this process when they were born they had their heads bound and you know then lived a normal life and whenever they died in adulthood buried under the floors of their homes, which was a, a, a normal kind of process then in those particular Neolithic cultures. Sometime, not too too long after, um, the body is exhumed, the head is removed, um, the remnants of the flesh and skin scraped away, and then the face is reshaped with clay and then painted, you know, sort of, it's rubbed shiny, it's kind of given a red pigment or hue. Some have little moustaches painted on them. Some have kind of like these wigs of like rush hair. And I mean, they're really super cool. But they, but these heads sit up on their own. They're kind of reshaped and remolded with plaster to sit up on their own. Like the way they sit up in museum cabinets today. They, they just kind of sit there. And it's a way of creating another worldly being. And I use this example of the Jericho skull in my book to talk about the ways in which even without talking, without touching, it's that sense of being face to face with another being, even an otherworldly being, as the Jericho skulls are meant to represent. And, you know, we don't know whether they were ancestors or gods. I lean, I don't think they were either. I, th I think they are just some kind of otherworldly being because um, these faces were remade and reshaped several times over for almost for like different ritual purposes. Um, but it's that sense of coming face to face with the otherworldly. And, and that's what that, really kind of represents so like then it's not directly related to what we have going on in biblical traditions but it's that same sense of just how important faces are that's why we see faces wherever we go do you know what i mean you see faces in the clouds in the shape of clouds whatever it's because we are i think we're built as humans to to see other social beings and to recognize them it's like why we're fonder of animals that have faces that are a little bit like ours rather than you know eyes around here and you know, noses down here I, I That's don't know. Actually, I just, it's a good point. Like it's a, it's like a proto evolutionary explanation of what ended up creating what we ended up believing about things. Yeah. I, I mean, some, yeah, some cognitive science of religion scholars who kind of look at the ways in which certain kinds of patterns or tropes of behavior are very much bound up with our evolutionary cognitive, um, genetics and development and context. And um, they would argue that, yeah, that, that it's, it's a basic kind of human premise to imagine our gods as like us basically 